is a nonprofit organization that is worldwide and we go into third world countries where there's a problem with facial deformities and other health risks and we do surgeries for them free of charge depending on the severity. There's a team of about, like I said, 60 medical volunteers and that consists of nurses, child psychologists, uh, surgeons. I was a student volunteer so there was me and one other girl that were students with along with the team of like 60 medical volunteers and as students we were there to educate the children and adults about dental hygiene, nutrition, and burn care prevention and dehydration so that after their surgeries they're able to take care of themselves. We have screening for three days where anyone is allowed to come and in Honduras we had over 300 people come and the kids or adults go through steps and stations where they're checked about like with their health, how severe the problem is, is the cleft lip or cleft palate, and a lot of times depending on the age. And then however they rank, we determine if they're going to be able to have surgery this time or they're going to have to come back. It was really hard to see people turn to rate, but it was, uh, you had to sort of keep perspective and see that the doctors know what they're doing. They know who they're choosing and who needs it right now. We also went into the city of Honduras and we went to orphanages and schools and educated them. And we also sort of helped the child psychologist in um, providing a happy environment for the kids prior to surgery because a lot of them have never seen doctors or been in a situation like this. And we, so we would play with them, distract them, and we just tried to make it a positive experience for everyone. We were able to pass out toothbrushes and toys to them, which was a big deal. At the orphanage, we were also able to donate some powdered milk, which is something they need and they were short on. And uh, we also taught them about like how to stop, drop, and roll and simple things like that for kids to understand. It was very eye-opening that you can do things like that when there's a language barrier, but you'd be amazed at how um, the way your face can portray things and just um, gestures and things like that. You can communicate with kids and the, the kids were probably the best of understanding that I could not speak their language and um, when I would point to a color or point to something in a picture they would tell me the Spanish word so that the next time I could say it to them or I could point out things and they would tell me what it is and they understood that I couldn't communicate with them but that I wanted to learn. Probably the most important relationship was with a little boy named Joel and he, he was six years old um, and he was actually born with a problem with his legs and his hips so that he, he, he had braces on his legs and that was the first way I picked him out. We were, the kids loved bubbles and so we were blowing bubbles and they would run after to hit them and he could never do it. He could never move fast enough, he could never get, or he could never get to a ball we were doing and so I sort of started favoring him just because I saw that he wasn't able to do everything else and quickly I formed a relationship with him where when I would get there every morning I would go to find him and I would sit with him and I was able to take him through surgery and take him to his mom afterwards and um, it was a special thing and it was hard to say goodbye but he was able to have his surgery and things worked out and I knew that that was why he was there and he was, it was happy for him so I needed to be happy for him. It was easy to form relationships because the kids were just ready to love you when you walked in. I think I definitely learned to appreciate everything I have in America. That was one thing and appreciate my health and appreciate the fact that I can go to a doctor anytime and I can move. I have a family that can pay for those sort of things and I don't have to worry about where I'm going to get a meal or if I'm going to be able to have a job the next day or where I'm going to be sleeping. Um, and I also learned a lot about being um, giving of things because these people were so 
so willing to give of what they had as well. The kids, we would bring toys and they would come and return them to us at the end of the day because they didn't know if they could keep them. And they were allowed to so we could tell them that they could, but they didn't want to take anything that wasn't theirs because they weren't used to having that. So that was a huge thing because a lot of times we wouldn't be like that and we have so much to give. It was hard to um, leave knowing that there were still people that had problems there that we didn't even get to touch because they're living on the streets. But at the same time, I left knowing that we had made a difference in over a hundred kids' lives and it's a process and we can't save everyone. And so I still felt good about it, but it was hard. It was an opportunity for me to grow and learn um, because these kids taught me more than I think I taught them. They, they taught me how to appreciate the things that I have because they were happy before the surgeries and the surgeries were just something to make their lives better and it wasn't something that they were angry about. They, you never saw a child waiting to be screamed that was upset or that was bitter about the life that they had led and how they might be living on the streets or they had to travel for two days to come here. They were just happy to be given the opportunity and so um, the chance that I had to see that and to put myself in a situation where I was serving every day and teaching kids and families that really needed something was what I got out of that experience the most.